Oyinga Kurta beer. Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes and Booze Reviews. I've got one here from Oyinga and it is their Kurta beer. Now I thought I'd tried everything from Oyinga. Obviously not because I haven't done this one before. But I really like Oyinga. I don't think, I can't think off the top of my head, a bad one that I've had from Oyinga. I probably have, but it doesn't spring to mind. But I do know that I've had some fantastic beers from Oyinga. My, my, I would say probably my favourite dunkel is the Altbayerisch dunkel from Oyinga. It is absolutely amazing stuff. The flavours you get from it are just sublime in my opinion. And I have yet to taste a dunkel that is better. I've tasted some that are almost as good, none better though. But getting back to this one, this looks quite an interesting one. And it's interesting for a couple of reasons. First of all, Kurta beer. What is Kurta beer? Well, Kurta beer is brewed especially as a beer to celebrate the festival, the Kurtwey festival, which is basically a church festival. Kurtwey in German l translates literally to parish fair, and it is the celebration of a church. Kirk, of course, in Germanic language means church. And for some strange reason, and I'm sure it's uh, Viking influence, Kirk in Scotland is, all, is, is quite a common name, and it comes from the, it, it's used for the word church as well. So that's a boring fact that will get you absolutely no money whatsoever. But there you go, I'm full of useless information that is useless, useless to everybody. But there you go. And uh, Kurt Vi is, as I say, it's a festival and you know the Germans love to brew beers for festivals and this is one of them. And it's been described as a cross between a Marzen and a dark export beer, which again is an interesting beer. Now Marzen, of course, is a festival type beer brewed for the Oktoberfest or it used to be brewed for the Oktoberfest. And if they're mixing that with a Dunkel, or if it's a cross between that and a Dunkel, I should say, to get it right, they're not mixing it, then that is interesting. But what is also interesting about this, they use a special technique, and that is called double decotion. And double decotion, or to give it its correct term, double decotion mashing, is a technique that is used by some of the Southern German brewers and some of the Czech brewers as well. In fact, the original Pilsner, they used double decotion or decotion mashing. You can do single doubles and triples, but you can do it as many times as you want really. And to be honest, I don't really want to go into the science of it, but I'll give you the basics. What it does, it's, it's a process that you use when you're doing the boil. What will happen is you will boil the, the, the grist that's in the vessel, in the copper vat, if you like, or the, the, the mash tun. Um, while it's going through its rest, you will scoop some of the water and the grist out and you will put that into another vessel and you will bring it up to the boil. Now, this is quite labor intensive and that is why it is not common among all German brewers. But this goes for a double decotion. And as I say, you can have a single decotion where you scoop just one segment out, or you can do it twice and you can do it three times. The chemical process is just fucking complicated. I've read up about it, and honestly, I would need flip charts, PowerPoint presentations to explain how the protein breaks down, how the acids break down, etc. But the bottom line is, according to the German brewers and the Czech brewers who do it, it gives the beer more flavor. That is the goal of decotion mashing. If you want to look it up for yourself, 
be my guest, but all I'm gonna do is say that they use double decotion mashing in this. So with that in mind, Iinga, I've gone through the history of the Iinga brewery so many times that you can find it on any of my other Iinga beer reviews. There's loads on the channel. Just look up Iinga and it should bring up a load of them on there. Um, yeah, so with that in mind, let's get on to the beer. Right, it's a 500 mil bottle. It's 5.8%. As is usual in the Bavarian beers, it has a protected EU geographical location. You had the Wittelbach coat of arms. You must have seen that on all the decent Bavarian beer. Lovenbroy have that, if I can get this in focus, Lovenbroy use this in their logo, as do quite a lot of other German brewers, Bayreuther is another one who springs to mind. But Oyinga, as I say, they are a quality brewer based in Oying in Germany, which is in Bavaria. And this beer, this particular beer, contains three different types of malt, which is interesting. Now, as I mentioned before, this the description of this stuff is it's it's unfiltered, it's cloudy, and it contains Obviously conforms to the Reinheitsgebot, but it contains three different types of malt, which is interesting. And the description says it's a cross between, or a mixture of a Marzen and Dunkel. Don't mistake that for a blended beer. They have not mixed Marzen and Dunkels together. It's what the beer tastes like. It reminds them of a cross between the two. Okay, so just get that in mind. It's not a blended beer. So with that in mind, let's get it open and let's see what it tastes like. Right, now I always make this point about Oyinga beers. I love their caps. It's like a little oil painting of the brewery. I'm sure you've seen them before if you've ever had an Oyinga beer. All right, let's get it in the glass. I'm not sure what glass is supposed to be used for this, but I'll put it in a tall, thin glass and see what gives. Now, that actually does look slightly darker than a Martin. Yeah, and it is, you, you know, you could, God, I can smell that from here. That smells really good. The malts are super strong on this. What are we getting on the nose? Oh, caramel malt. Lovely, sweet biscuit and caramel. Oh, that smells so good. Now, I've just tried the Ramtam or Dark Landlord, which was okay. It reminded me of a mild, a British mild, but I was disappointed that it didn't have massive flavours in it, which is a shame really, because the Landlord and the Bolt Maker are really nice beers, full of flavour. That was slightly lacking a little bit, but I can tell just by the aroma, this is gonna taste great. Yeah, bread and caramel. They're the two big, malty flavours. There's some very, very slight honey notes on this, which I'm assuming are coming from the yeast. And yeah, there's some herbal notes and earthy notes, but they're not that big. Smells great. Let's get it down the hatch. Zum Wohl, as they say in Germany. Oh, that's really good. Oh, superb. And they have got that spot on with that description of a cross between a Martin and a Dunkel. If I didn't know, know better, I'd say the two are mixed. It's quite a novel idea to do that, actually. Mix, mix their Martin with their Altbayerish Dunkel, but personally, I'd be hard pushed to do that because the taste of the Altbayerish Dunkel that shouldn't be messed with. But maybe one day I will do that, create a blended beer, but not today, because I've got virtually that here. Fair levels of carbonation, not sure whether you can see that or not. Translates to a nice mouthfeel. Yeah, 
Oh, it's just so good. Just brimming with flavour. Moorish, bready malt, caramel malt, honey sweetness, and a nice long caramel finish with a little touch of toffee bitterness on there as well. Like roasted toffee, very subtle. You really would have to, you know, concentrate to get that. No trace of ethanol on that whatsoever. And at 5.8%, that's not a bad thing. But this is so good, it really is. Very full bodied as well, considering the four ingredients. Oh, I cannot get enough of that. That is absolutely gorgeous. Now in German beer, this is what I like. I much prefer, well, I am saying I much prefer, but at certain times I do prefer Dunkel style beers. The Martzens are okay from Bavaria. I've had a couple that have been not so good, shall we say, from the smaller uh, the smaller Bavarian brewers, but but this one, oh, it's just so good. Mm. Oh. I, <clears throat> I could drink this all night. I really could. It is that good. It's got such a Moorish flavour, and it is. It's you know, it's got that. If you can imagine a Martin, a good Martin, but just double the caramel malt on it double the bread malt on it and keep the drinkability of a Martin and you've got that it's just superb it really is and the carbonation on it it looks quite quite aggressive but it's not that, that mouthfeel is just superb oh Perfect. That is Bavaria at its best. <laughs>Yeah. <laughs>
just to give you my opinion your peer, on beers and maybe sort of steer you in the right direction or you know just just give you my opinion on what the beers taste like and the whole ethos of craft beer I think is brilliant it's like you know it's, it's the punk ethos you know fuck the big corporations we're going to do it ourselves and yeah that's brilliant but the end result is more expensive and you know when I can buy this for £2.33 a bottle I find it hard to pay double that for an, some generic IPA that tastes very similar to you know all the other IPAs that are out there and I know that sounds like a sweeping statement but it wouldn't be so bad if they could brew to this quality but I just don't get that from these craft brewers and it's a shame you know and I'm really you know I want to support these craft brewers and I want to you know sing their praises and all that but I you know when I come up against stuff like this I just I just find it you know hard to do now with brexit happening and all that you know the the import stuff it's probably going to cost more so it may level the playing field so you know all these craft brewers who are moaning about brexit and all that maybe it's a good thing maybe i will have to you know weigh up the cost of this german stuff and the czech stuff and say well i just can't afford it it's gonna it's gonna be cheaper to buy craft beer who knows i don't know who can pr predict the future but anyway i'm going way off topic here that's that's the philosophy behind you know my thinking when it comes to this stuff and the british brewed craft beer stuff that's imitating these sort of styles these german styles no that's just my opinion as they say opinions are like assholes everyone's got one but you just don't want to hear it sometimes but there you go you're going to hear it now but this stuff is a 10 out of 10 it's definitely recommended if you can get it hold get hold of it it's under two pound fifty it comes from noble green that is probably going to be the best under £2.50, £2.33 that you're ever going to spend on a beer. Believe me, that is lovely. I defy anyone to say they don't like that. If you do, you've got taste in your ass. And remember, beer is working class champagne. <laughs>